Kawasaki W650 Winterization Part 12 Carburetor Fuel Service Level So let's say you want, you've want you cleaned your carburetor and uh, you're ready to tune it <clears throat> but before you tune it you need to know before you touch the uh, the idle screws which are according to the manual you should set to the factory settings right after you're done cleaning which is two and one eighth of a turn out let's say your your uh, idle screws are are okay they're at the factory setting um, before you do anything you need to be be sure that your your fuel in the in the carburetor is basically here right you see that where where the two well, the ball connects to the main body of the carburetor. There is a seal. So basically, the ballpark figure is your fuel level should be at that seal. Um, half a millimeter down or up to 1.5 millimeter up above that seal level. So um, <clears throat> this is super important because this is the basic sort of setting the first step is to set the fuel level correctly if you get this wrong right or if you don't do this you don't know what the fuel level is service level is you start screwing up screwing the uh, idle screws right and you will have inconsistent or unpredictable results because maybe your, uh, your idle screws might be okay the level of uh, fuel in the air mixture might be okay but the problem is that the the uh, you know it's it's like you set the idle screw to let's say three turns out four turns out and you think oh great so four turns out it is right but it might be not that it's not the amount of like you cannot count the, the and actually deal with the idle screws before you set the baseline and the baseline is your service level of fuel needs to be correct okay so how how do you do that um, well, first of all, what you need for this is some sort of a fuel tank. So in my case, I took the fuel tank off and I have this, um, this kind of fuel, the fuel tank, right? The plastic bottle, right? That you can get on Amazon or in China for minimal amount of money. And I just hooked it up like this so that you have a constant flow of fuel into the carburetors, right? What else do you need? You need... Um, some sort of a container, a safe container for the fuel as it leaks. And you need something like uh, this hose here. I have this, uh, this is a five millimeter hose. By manual, you should have a six millimeter diameter hose here. I have a five millimeter, but it should be about um, 300 millimeter in length. So 30 centimeters, basically. That's a 30 centimeter fuel line. Uh, in order for the uh, it's net not slipping from the nozzle easily, because that nozzle right there, see that nozzle right there? Yeah, that one. In order for it not to slip out easily, right? I just put it, put the uh, um, the plastic uh, zipper there, right? So it's, you, do, you wear it like this, and you kind of turn this up a little bit. See, and it holds. It holds that nipple very well. Okay, so what you need to do, I found, is that first, if you connect it, if you just connect it, like things like that, you need to let the fuel run a little bit, right? So you kind of put, you put the uh, hose, the fuel hose into the container, right? Into the, into the, that container, right? And let it run a little bit. Then turn off the tap, this tap, this tap here, right? Turn it off. And then once you're off, you kind of, once that's off, you kind of put the hose like this, right? And after you, you, you this means you're ready. So there's no, no more air bubbles in the, in here, in the carburetor. You took out all the air bubbles by running the fuel a little bit into the container and now you're ready to actually take the measure. Now, notice that your fuel from your main tank is on at this point. Make sure that the fuel is on. Um, if you have the tank 
mount it, then you, you can set the petcock to pry, which is prime, basically. Set it to that position in the petcock. That means the fuel will flow regardless of the vacuum valve on the petcock. Basically, you know, you want it running all the time. And then you open the valve with your hex key to let the fuel run. Okay, so look at this. You see the fuel level? If you come close to the, the carburetor bolt, see that bolt there? And that's the, the seal, right? That's the, the crack in the bowl, is that's the seal. So you can see that the level of gasoline is actually at that level, at the same level as the seal. So that's good. So what you need to do is you need to lower it down slightly the tube and you can see the the uh, the bubble of gasoline goes up okay so at this point you know that the fuel level is okay it's on the same level as that seal here that seal here right see all the way there so that's good now do not when you measure this do not go up and then down always go only down okay otherwise you'll get wrong measurement okay so so far so good this is okay now in my case um, the fuel level is okay however uh, if you've installed the uh, <clears throat> like let's say new float valves or new floats um, and you didn't set the floats correctly then the fuel level will be higher or lower. So the it can go half a millimeter lower or 1.5 maximum, 1.5 millimeter higher than that seal. Okay, and that's considered to be okay. However, it's lower or higher, then you need to dis you need to take out the carb from here, open up the bowl, and there is a on the on the float itself there is like like a little. Uh, like a little metal uh, tongue or a pedal that you need to bend a little bit up or down depending on where you want to float go up or down where do you want to you know your level to be higher or lower um, I'm not gonna go over this because this is um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube enormous amount of videos on YouTube on how to properly adjust the, the carburetor float. The Harley-Davidson carburetor video that I mentioned before in my previous videos, you can find it on YouTube, uh, shows you how to set the floats properly. So I'm not, you know, I don't want to go into that. It's it's boring to tell the truth. But in, in any case, um, now what? After you've done this, um, the next step is make sure that um, there is no air leaks, so you need to tighten these clamps very well, as well as when you attach the air boxes, you, you know, the spring must clamp this part, the, the rubber over this part very well. And um, on top of that, and then start the engine, you need to warm up the engine to full, to full uh, you know, until it's warm essentially. And then, Using the, you, you know, try to give it some more gas with your throttle and you judge how thin, sorry, how lean and how, how rich the mixture is when you turn the handle. Um, so basically, if you turn the handle and, and you let it go and then you can hear that the RPMs are kind of slow to come back to idle. That means the mixture is too lean. Remember, you have to do this when the engine is warm, fully warm, not on choke, right? You need to shut off the choke and, you know, and do all these experiments with a, like really warm engine, hot engine. And then what happens is if you, on a warm engine, if you blip the throttle and the engine wants to die, right? You blip the throttle, let go, and the engine kind of wanted to die, but came back. Uh, that means the uh, mixture is too rich. So you need to use your idle screws to control the mixture. So in my case, um, when I started the the the, uh, the bike, the bike started fine. 
but um, it was a bit too lean. So what I did is um, I set the idle screws to two and a quarter, you know, two and three eighths essentially um, out on both cylinders. And, uh, you know, it used to be two and one eighth. So I gave it two more eighths. So basically roughly it's two and a quarter right now. And uh, let's see, I haven't started it. Let's see how the engine will behave. I hope that's it because for this model, for 2001 model, two and one eighth out is the de facto, you know, default factory uh, kind of setting. But for, I think for the same model, W650 2005 and on, the, the manual recommends two and, and three eighths. So currently, even though this is a 2001 model, I set it to two and three eighths just to see how the how the engine will behave. Now, there, it's always a better to make it a little bit richer than not because, um, because you know, if you put it to lean condition, lean condition overheats your engine, right? And this is a, you know, air-cooled engine. Um, it can damage the engine. So it's better to make it, mm, it's better to make it proper. But if you don't know exactly what proper is, it's better to make it just a little bit on the rich side than on the lean side. Uh, but ideally, you know, there's, a, again, tons of videos on how to adjust the carburetor by by the sound of the engine, with the idling engine. Um, some people recommend to kind of uh, go to the rich condition and then quarter turn away from the rich condition. It's your normal condition, right? So they kind of go make it a little bit richer. I, I did the opposite. I kind of went to the factory position and it's too lean and I gave it just, you know, a quarter turn more. And I'm hoping that, you know, uh, default factory position for 2005 bikes is good in for my case as well so i don't know why they increased the richness for 2005 models there probably was some reason so anyway i set it to that 2005 models w650 uh, and we'll see but in any case that's it you you've checked the levels and um that's all I can say about carburetor tuning. Uh, so basically, is if you're if you have no vacuum leaks, the engine should run fine at this setting. And obviously, if your level is correct inside the uh, inside the bowl. Okay. Thanks. Uh, please let me know in comments if you noticed uh, something that I didn't notice or if I got if if I forgot something. I really appreciate it. Thank you.